was loose from the bottomless pit that helped Alexander the Great conquer the known world at that time. That fallen angel was thrown into a bottomless pit, but, when, but that was the deadly wound. But when he's released in Revelation chapter 9, that wound was healed, and he's back in action again. You see what I'm saying? We went over last week about the beast and the systems, how the seven heads, we had the seven heads, that was the seven empires that had persecuted God's people. Y'all remember that? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, verse 4. And they worshipped the dragon, which is Satan, which gave power unto the beast. And they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? Worship is also another name for obey. They obeyed his precepts and they obeyed his commands because they were afraid of him. You see, it says, Who is able to make war with him? Who is able to conquer him? So he had a supernatural power behind the system. It's not just like a regular uh, governmental system. This system will be like those systems of old, like the Roman Empire, like the Grecian Empire, that came in with ruthlessness, with a power that no one could conquer. That's the Antichrist. It will happen fast, too. Very fast. Let me keep going. And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies. And power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. And he opened his mouth and blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them who dwell in. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. And all who dwell upon the earth shall worship or obey, whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. That lets you know that those true Christians that love the Lord Jesus Christ more than life itself, more than their own self, will not obey. They will not worship this system that's being set up or the Antichrist or the beast. You see what I'm saying? And that's why that many will be overcome. Turn with me now to Daniel chapter 8. We'll come back to Revelation. Daniel chapter 8. I'm going to be talking a little bit fast and doing a little bit of teaching. Yeah. Hope y'all can write. <coughs> because Daniel describes the Antichrist here in verse 23. And in, the, and in the latter time of their kingdom, when the transgressors are come to full, a king of fierce countenance and understanding dark sentences shall stand up. Now this latter time when the transgression is full is speaking of the times, the first three and a half years. The first three and a half years when they received this man as their Messiah. The Jews will receive this Antichrist as their Messiah. Because Jesus said in John chapter 5 that they denied him but someone would come in his own name that they should receive. So they shall receive him. Understanding that he will also be received by Islam. There's no way he can make peace between Israel and Islam and build a temple on the Temple Mount next to the Dome of the Rock if, if he was not also their 12th Imam, their Messiah. Right. You see what I'm saying? He'll have both bloodlines. I'll go into that in just a minute. <clears throat> it also says he'll have, dark, he'll have fierce countenance and understanding dark sentences <laughs> shall stand up. He will understand not only the word, and be able to twist the word, but he'll also be able to understand and twist their surahs, and then mix these things together, and say he is, he's from Abraham. And he's going to try to mix these things together, saying they're both of the Abrahamic faith, and take the world's three biggest religions and put them together. <coughs> Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. And put, make them try to be as one, and... This is where these dark sentences will come in handy because he'll be able to twist the word of the living God and confuse me. Jesus said even the elect will be deceived if that were possible in Matthew 24. So that's why we must stay on our toes. We must have our emotions in check and understand the word of the living God. Because I'll tell you in a little bit, he's going to try to flatter many to fall away and believe his lying doctrine. Mm -hmm. Verse 24, and his power shall be mighty, but not by his own power. I let you know there's a fallen angel behind him. And he shall destroy wonderfully and shall prosper and practice and shall destroy the mighty and the holy people. This is mostly talking about the Jews when he floods into Israel, floods into Jerusalem, and destroys many, 
millions of Jews, and the others depart into Petra. But he also destroyed Christians too. This uh, destroying wonderfully is speaking of Revelation chapter 6, 1 through 8, where like I told you before, in Revelation chapter 6, verse 1, there's one that comes on a white horse going forth to conquer, and no one can stop him. There's only one right. that can stop him. And he's going to stop him, maybe he is. Go to Daniel 11, 31. This will pick up more on the Antichrist here. Because many people still today don't believe he's going to be able to take Jerusalem. They believe this is the part where God will defend Jerusalem, but not yet. He will go in and take Jerusalem. Verse 31, it says, An arm shall stand on his part. That means he will have the military power to take Jerusalem. And they shall pollute the sanctuary of strength. There, there it is. And shall take away the daily sacrifice and shall place the abomination that makes desolate. Many people interpret that to believe that he is going to throw a sow, a pig, upon their altar to pollute whatever temple that they have there. Because that would be an abomination as far as Leviticus is concerned. Verse 32, And such as do wickedly against the covenant shall be corrupted by what? It says flatteries. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever noticed those in false doctrine that knock on your door? Some of them will have cookies, honey buns, and all their flattery. I was thinking on that one day when I, when I had an incident happen of someone I knew and loved dearly. They come to them with cookies and flattery. You see, he's going to use food or flattery to deceive, the Satan does. So if he can't get you through food and try to whet your fleshly appetite, he'll, he'll try to flatter your mind and say how great you're doing, how good you are, how well versed you are in the Scriptures, and then try to twist you from your own faith into his faith. That's flattery. He will tell you how great everything is about you, and how wonderful you are. And you know when someone starts pouring it on thick, there's something wrong. Oh, yeah. We all need encouragement. I'm not talking about godly encouragement and honor where honor is due. I'm speaking on flattery. Have you ever had somebody flatter you to try to get you to move a certain direction? Oh, yeah. Come on. Yep. <laughs> this guy's going to be good at it. But the people, watch this, it said, but the people, but the people that know their God shall be strong yeah. in their exploits. That means if you know Jesus and you allow Him to have you, you deny self, take it up the cross and follow Him, you won't be flattered into giving up Christ. You won't be flattered into listening and denying Jesus Christ as the only Son of God, the only way to heaven. You see, that's going to be the flattery in the end times. He's going to say, well, you can worship Jesus. I'm not saying not to worship Jesus. Oh, we love Jesus, but He's not the only way truth and life. Then he'll try to twist this thing just like they have when they set up Christ line. 